Hello, uh, this is the uh, first ever TAG talk and this is uh, Simon Hurst presenting it. Um, I'm the communication secretary for the traditional architecture group and um, I'd like to just run through uh, a few interesting capitals I've seen uh, across my travels on holiday, uh, mainly over the last 10 years while having a digital camera so they're easy to access. I have lots of um, 7x5 prints and some albums but um, I'll have to wait to scan those to include them in a, in a further presentation. So yes, I've been um, traveling all over the, the world really for the last 10 years on holiday um, um, and various countries will feature here, but um, obviously not you know, comprehensive the whole world, but um, this is what I've seen so far. And of course it can grow and grow. So uh, it'll always develop. So let's start off with um, some talk um, on capitals. And the first slide coming up. So here's one in Naples. Uh, Naples features um, a few times in this just because I happened to spend a few days there and saw lots of interesting things. So, you know, we'd all recognise this as being in the classical tradition, kind of a Corinthian shape with the loops, but it's all kind of wookie like and um, all hair forming curls as the loops and uh, rather fun. The rest of it all quite conventional. So you see sort of little oddities, you know, where you think you're not like to expect them. So moving along, uh, let's have a look at the next one. So we're going to look not only at sort of the Western tradition, but also sort of Islamic culture. I haven't been to Turkey a couple of times, North Africa. And so there'll be sort of examples of, which show their time and, and date, like on the one on the left is clearly sort of 20th century and the one on the right clearly a lot older. And we're going to look at, you know, quite interesting exotic capitals, which, you know, to us um, sort of have recognisable elements of Western classical tradition but clearly um, from a different culture uh, and that's the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul and while we're still in Istanbul um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about what's below capitals as well because columns also seem to be quite interesting sometimes and this is a, a ex-German bank building I think in Istanbul uh, with sort of rusticated columns um, which I rather like and that's going to continue with a little bit of a theme there so had to not miss out um, one of my heroes, Edwin Lutchins. That's one of his Midland banks. That's uh, one in Manchester, but they're all over the country. And um, you've got this sort of mannerist detail of the rusticated pilaster sort of dissolving into the, into the wall plane. And on the right is a building in St. Petersburg. I mean, it could be anywhere probably, but um, there it is. Um, with, again, you can just see some Doric little pilasters poking out from the heavy rustication. And where did it all come from? Well, on the left is Volubilis, that's in Morocco, uh, a Roman settlement uh, built probably by all the local craftsmen. And therefore you see on the, the right, um, quite a quaint little quirky Ionic. It reminds me of a koala bear, I don't know why. And the uh, eggs are sort of rather less egg shaped than conventionally. And on the left, you'll sort of see what I was going on about, about dissolving pilasters because the views of the arches are actually carved in to form the pilaster and the pilaster sort of sails through the springing point of that um, moulding there. So it's, it's all quite manner of so that consciously being so, um, whereas the previous ones obviously were. So um, looking at last one, perhaps looking at um, rustication and dissolved pilasters. So on the left, that's in uh, Quito in Ecuador. Uh, I went to South America for about six weeks, so um, saw quite a lot of countries and interesting details. And then on the right, um, that's in Arequipa, um, and that's in Peru. Uh, it's all made out of this volcanic rock, so you can sort of see it's quite porous and can't take very fine detail, but you've got these sort of little ionic pilasters peeping out behind the half round engaged column. And you can kind of see that the, uh, if I move my cursor, you can see that um, you know, the wall plane dissolves into this plaster, which is quite a, by our standards, we call that sort of mannerist detail, but um, to them, they were just doing something because that was the thing they wanted to do. So moving on, more rustication, just because we're still on um, rustication and columns. I rather like this one, which um, is in Quito, uh, Ecuador again, that's the monastery, um, sort of 1550s to 1680s, it was constructed. And I, I like the way the rustication sort of straps the columns of the wall, stop it escaping. And if you look above the, um, the column, the entablature, you've got this sort of Doric frieze, but it's corbels. And on the right, it sort of, it comes its full blown self. So you can see the trigger sort of curl out to support the bracket. 
and you've got a sneak preview over the next slide, which is in Naples again. So Naples would feature there. We've got these weird little uh, triglyph blocks sort of hanging. I'm not sure what they're doing anyway, but someone's being quite clever. Um, uh, and that's what it's all about, cleverness and fun, really. You don't have to conventionally stick to the way the orders are, are seen and prescribed. Um, and here we are moving um, back across to Arequipa, uh, Peru. And um, what I like about these two examples is you've got this sort of giant order of um, sort of pilasters. And then as I sort of, it's carved away and you've got a, on the left, you've got a Solomonic, Solomonic column there embedded in inside the pilaster. And on the right, you've got a sort of Tuscan Doric um, sort of just poking out inside. It's sort of just perched inside a sort of giant order. And this is the um, Mestizo style, which is kind of combination, fusion of the local indigenous kind of um, carving and decoration and iconography with sort of the Spanish in influence of the sort of Baroque and, and classical Western tradition. And, and somehow it's better for it. I love it. So moving along, um, this actually reminded me, funny enough, jumping across to Italy again. Uh, this is a church in Salerno where um, it would have been um, a sort of main nave surrounded on both sides by old reclaimed columns like you'd see on the right there, um, probably with arches. And then in the 1920s, 30s, they decided to sort of beef it all up and make the plasters much thicker. And then more recently, they've obviously known that the columns inside are all you know, from antiquity and carved that little pocket so you can kind of see the two. So it's sort of this, this hybrid of, um, of the old and the new. And the most extreme version I know of this, um, others might disagree, is uh, on uh, Ortigia, the island by Syracuse in Sicily. And here, if you look on the left-hand photograph, you can see the outside of it. It is a full-blown um, 5th century BC Doric, Greek Doric, Doric temple. And it's been inbuilt to turn into a church. So um, yeah, it was uh, it was refunded, I think, in um, 1690s, sort of Baroque style. Um, but it was yeah, 1200 years a Greek Doric temple, and then after that, a church. And on the uh, right, you can see the inside of it, which again is, is they've just carved out the walls on the side to kind of um, make it work as an as a nave with two aisles. So moving along. Um, we're on the, still on the sort of feature of building over features on, on the left. If someone's built next to a church and thought, well, they can't really cover up all that fine carvings. So if that little pocket out in the middle, very typical. You see this everywhere. Um, this is a, a reused, reclaimed column. Um, this is in uh, Cordoba, in Spain, and uh, it's just used to reinforce the corner, stop getting chipped off by carts and things. And then on the right, I love this one. This is in Malaga, in Spain. Um, reused bits enormous column shafts and tiny little capitals which clearly never <laughs> would have fitted on there but all makes rather fun interesting quirky composition so now we're going to look at just a few more little relics of um, bits of classical architecture outside the uh, original context so a rather fun capital on the left that's outside the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul and then in the middle um, that's the Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania in Algeria um, about 2,000 years old, uh, an Ionic. Uh, most of the capitals, I think, robbed, and um, yeah, a lot of buildings became ruined not through just general decay, um, but actual active um, robbing, quarrying of the stone. And um, the, the poor little capital is lying upside down. And a rather fun, wide-eyed one um, on the um, far right. That's also from Algeria. So um, while we're on sort of interesting, scrolly Ionic. How about this one here coming up? It's on the left. This is Granada, Spain, the Renaissance Palace, about 1527. Um, I just really like the very fine, thin, um, sort of paper-like scrolls that you see. And then nipping back on the right to Arequipa. Um, I just like this shot because I managed to time it quite well for the man with the box. And uh, even then another wide-eyed Ionics. Um, it's all very sweet. And then um, moving on. We've got a sort of bearded Ionic, uh, that's an arrow keeper. Uh, in the middle, a really bearded one. So these are, um, this is the actual temple of, um, oh, sorry, Tivoli. This is the um, organ fountain, um, Villa d'Este, uh, 1570s, with um, these kind of carotid sort of figures. Uh, well, tenemons or antelids, they might be antelids, might not be. 
Anyway, and then uh, on the right, that's a proper kind of carotid, the ionic form with a lady, and that's in Argentina, Buenos Aires, would you have guessed that? So another building in Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires again, just another, they have a very fruity kind of language of uh, mixing elements, which you'd recognize, you know, you've got bits of ionic on that left-hand photograph. And on the right, they've decided to stretch an ionic kind of capital over two columns, it's sort of composite really. And then uh, up above, you've got the trick list of the Doric. So, you know, they didn't mind mixing and matching as long as it looked this part, uh, that's what they did. So we're still on deviations from the norm. And uh, how about this one? If one ionic capital isn't enough, why not stack three on top of each other? Uh, and that's in Quito, Ecuador. Um, and then how about um, some ionic pilasters wrapped around a corner? Um, this happens a fair bit, actually. Um, there's one in Regent's Park, which I need to find a photograph of it. And this is uh, Duga. Um, and this is a, a second century BC uh, Livio Punic mausoleum. And you'll see the sort of proto-ionic um, capital, uh, which is kind of two volutes sort of sprouting out from the column shaft. They're sort of wrapped and folded around the corner. Rather nice. And then again, if you want to see folding of architecture like wallpaper. How about this one? This is the Catania in Sicily, um, I guess 1930s. Very stripped back paired, but clearly ionic. And um, I find it slightly disturbing that the, those corner pilasters just sort of fold around, but um, why not? And then similar period again in Italy. Uh, this is Taranto, this is the local post office. Again, just really nice, confident and, and well-carved and, and robust detailing. And then how about um, the actual use of materiality in your forming of your architecture? So on the right, we've got uh, Potsdam. This is obviously uh, made in, uh, in iron and, um, you know, it sort of rather works very well. It's sort of minimal and floaty, but um, does the job, you know what it is. And how about uh, another Peruvian ionic? I've seen that before, but I love them, so there's another one. And then that leads through to... Um, Arequipa, and uh, and then uh, yeah, that one on the right is actually Cusco. So um, we've got a little. If you look, you've got the um, column capital here, and then one of them just just poking out from inside this pier. Um, as a sort of bright little bracket corbel, and that happens quite a lot. So this is all from um, Cusco. Uh, again, the same idea of sort of dissolving of capitals coming out of the out of the stonework, and the one on the the right, um, Cusco again. I'm showing it more for the actual corbel on corbel in the middle there, sort of uh, above the sort of um, arch, um, a sort of fractalization of architecture and things growing out of other things. We'll see a bit more of that later, but I thought that was rather fun. So, yeah, so on a similar theme, here's um, more column capitals and parts of shafts that um, sprout out of the wall to form a sort of springing point for either a vault or an arch. And then the most extreme version um, is the one on the, on the far right there. Uh, which is the, um, I don't know, that's in Tunis, Tunis that's um, the museum there, which um, was a country house palace. And then you've got these kind of rocket boosters um, holding up the arches on just floating from the ceiling, sort of defying gravity. Um, anyway, we're still looking at some Ionic, um, just got a bit obsessed by Ionic. Uh, these are by one of my favourite architects, um, Jose Fletchnik. Uh, he was born in 1872 died in 1957. He started work in um, Prague, moved to Vienna, and then back to Ljubljana, his hometown from the 1920s. And these are examples from that period uh, where he was pr prolific, built everything, all the bridges across the river, um, the Sluice Gate, um, the cemetery, lots of public buildings. It's well worth a visit. Um, so we'll see some more Plechnik in Ljubljana, in Slovenia here. So this is the Sluice Gate with sort of proto coming out with a nice lady's head between it. And then you've got these sort of floating capitals up above on those shafts. And then Plechnik again, he did all the lamp posts, um, two on the middle and left uh, in Ljubljana. And on the right, we've got um, Prague Castle. This is a staircase that's cut through and this is on the landings with, uh, again, one of his unique ionics. He seems to look bellish, reinventing the wheel there. And then um, two more from Prague Castle. So this is the other side of that staircase that's cut through the main building. Uh, with his lovely bulls supporting uh, the entablatures. And then the middle shaft, you'll notice, uh, if I can move my little cursor, there's this little ionic capital as a corbel. And another one on the right, not sure what that is really, but um, again, very inventive 
uh, one of the most inventive architects I know. And uh, it started off uh, with one of his early works in Vienna here, look, which is um, all concrete, barely got a capital at all, you could say. I mean, it's, it's a brutalist, really, but um, very, very, very elegant, I think. So we're on sort of minimalism now. So I'll show you one from Germany. So we've got a, a bit of the stadium there, 1936, uh, Albert Speer. Um, and you know, you've got just a hint of a sort of capital detail on those inner little columns between the gateways going through under the seating, uh, but nothing on the main columns on the left there. Very, very strict and minimalist. And then I thought we'd go maximalist again, Berlin, Sansi Sea Potsdam. And uh, this is a Chinese house with um, full blown columns gilded and uh, yeah, uh, two extremes really there. Good fun. And then not quite finished with Ionic, a bit of Bulgaria and some sort of 1930s, 40s, I guess. So again, some ionic, and again, just very much of its time, very confident and kind of, you know, harping back to the past, but bringing it forward. And then uh, let's move on to some other types. So we've got some ionic with a Doric freeze. This is in um, uh, St. Petersburg. And again, I'm just going past on the boat. I think you can't do that. That's completely wrong. But you know, why not? You know, it's, um, it's a nice, interesting mix. And if you're not a purist, it's not going to offend anybody. If you are, then look away. And then uh, let's move through to um, some more permutations. Um, so these are more sort of robust Corinthian and composite types. We've got a very nice one on the left there um, from Catania, Sicily. Got Lecce in the middle, and we've got um, uh, Lecce on the on the right as well. Some fern sort of fronds forming capitals within a sort of conventional classical kind of form. And then Lecce again, we got um, this one populated with angels, cherubs, and on the right, that one is in um, in Notto, which is Sicily, and um, and that one's uh, again a sort of mixture of interesting ionic swirls and Corinthian forms. And then uh, here's another one, well, the fun one, um, on the left, sort of just scrolly. And then on the right, uh, we've got one which is kind of no capitals at all. It's just got a sort of fish scale kind of column and it's a little fish scale sort of console. But, um, and then moving on again, uh, these two are let's say. So again, you work with a, a sort of traditional form and then you populate it with iconography that actually has some meaning to your sort of own purpose. So obviously Catholic church and uh, motifs that sort of would be recognised by the brethren. And then uh, a nice swirly one, that's in Salerno in Italy. And a nautical one, that's in Catherine Palace in St. Petersburg, one of the garden pavilions. And uh, uh, well, they're sort of nice with the dolphins intertwined, sort of Neptune's head. Um, and then this is more St. Petersburg, can't resist a bit of the underground. So you've got these columns sort of representing all the different trades. You've got electricity on the left, and you've got mining in sort of, uh, yeah, on the right with the, the Davy lamps and the sort of pneumatic drill. And the middle, again, nautical one, nice integration of an, a, an anchor into a capital, again, St. Petersburg. So we're sort of moving through a bit into the 20th century with that metro station, 1950s, I think that is. And here we are in Cuba now, and some Art Deco. This is the university building, the library, um, with these kind of Deco Corinthian. Um, kind of work more fun on the right. You can see where they're sort of truncated into a really thin, skinny version, very wide awake. And um, moving on, another Art Deco one on the left. We got the Picardi building in Havana. Um, you know, it's kind of a recognisable capital bit with the local sort of the more modern um, motifs. But you know, does it really work? It's kind of like wallpapering. But then on the the right, another hero, Charles Harrison, Townsend, Hornimer Museum in London. Again, you've got these giant kind of giant order of these pilasters, uh, which is sort of a capital, but not. And then the ones above these little minor gallery of the lines arcade, that's got definitely sort of organic sort of um, capitals there, but um, yeah, in the direction of the spirit of his own invention. And how about, again, more invention. Here is the British Museum, this little rear um, element by um, John Burnett. Uh, 1910 um, with a lion's head really kind of inventive and unusual and of its time really good and the whole that whole sort of staircase thing is, is fascinating to look at and then uh, we've got one in Budapest on the um, Hungary with Mercury 
over on the right. And um, this is going to feature a bit more now. It's a little bit of a theme. And uh, oops, going back. So you can see he's got um, his wings on his helmet. You can see the shaft in the middle and two snakes either side. Let me try and move my cursor without. There we are. So there's these two snakes. And that's from a sort of legend of him trying to break up a fight between two snakes and throwing a shaft and then they intertwine, which is a normal motif you'll see in a minute. Um, but here they are, they're sort of post sort of um, attack and the retreating Mercury's done his job. Um, so here we are, some more um, weird, weird oddities from Budapest. We've got the Gellert bars. It's kind of a capital, it's a light fitting, it's also the springing point for an arch, or in sort of glazed terracotta. Uh, the middle is Budapest metro station with these sort of wrought iron columns and then you've got these kind of capitals sort of stuck on just because they want to ornament it, it doesn't really do anything but um, makes it look pretty. And then on the right, uh, sort of Atlantis again, so it's either Atlantis figure or it's a sort of Telamon and um, I could have shown endless versions of this from all around the world that could be a tall call on its own but there's just one because it's kind of fun and stylized. Um, so we talked a bit about Mercury before, and in Lisbon, it seems to feature quite a lot. So on the left, uh, you've got the whole shaft, Mercury shaft, sort of wing shaft coming out with the two intertwined snakes we talked about, sort of sprouting out and engaging with the entablature. Uh, that is a bank building, um, so it's sort of yeah, related to commerce. And on the right, again, that's also in Lisbon. Uh, you've got in the central element, you've got a sort of flaming torch there with the two snakes and the wings. Um, I think after the earthquake, there was a whole rejuvenation of the city. So it's also a symbol of that. So that could be why it's sort of widely used through many buildings. So uh, moving along, uh, we've got this one's rather fun. Quito, Ecuador again. We've got a sort of triple decker kind of or triple column capital, this sort of ionic composite type thing. Maybe it's Corinthian. And um, you've got a sort of pilaster and then a sort of three quarter engaged column and that sort of the capital as if it might sort of just have you know four capitals all rolled into one and then more of that mosquito, mosquito style over on the left in Arequipa Peru just absolutely covered in carving beautiful with a sort of fur with a sort of fern or it's a feather kind of capital uh, on that sort of Doric sort of moulding and then some oddities from Prague um, on the left there again sort of Doric um, no sort of capitals just rather nice and the middle one, um, that one, has, has, that's a very much local style. This sort of red and, and white stone. And um, again, you could say that that figured carving is a capital and you've got a frieze above it, or really much of its, of its time and of its period and of its location. And then the very, very strange one, again in Prague, um, you'd recognise it as being columns with emphasis and capitals and even bits of entablature, but, you know, that's, uh, I've never seen anything like it. Fun. And then I've got to include a bit of Greek revival. So I've been in New York and uh, that's got, you know, columns, pilasters, double capitals, everything. And a very similar vein, one of my other architectural heroes is um, Alexander Greek Thompson up in Glasgow. This is Homewood, um, a real set piece house. It's open to the public by the National Trust and um, just, yeah, beautifully detailed all throughout. So. Moving on to a bit of fractalization again, we said, talked earlier about columns that are embedded on columns and columns again. And then on the left, that's Granada Cathedral, a sort of layering of, and every single little facet has got its own little little sliver of capital there. Um, I, think it's, I think it's very jazzy, that one. And then similar idea, much older and English, just a timber overmantle, again with the triple um, columns, um, all carved in oak. And then uh, go well, as we're in the UK, two very British orders, bringing us up a bit more to date. So on the left, we've got the Ammonite capital, invented by George Dance in the 1780s, first used in London, but very popular. Uh, there, was a, there was a guy called Ammon uh, who lived in Lewis down near Brighton, and he um, had the Ammonite order on his house, and you see several examples of it there. Um, and then on the, on the right, this is John Utram, who I used to work for. Uh, this is the pumping station at the Isle of Dogs in the city of London. And uh, again, he has his own iconography for everything. But, you know, I defy anyone to not imagine that if you think about the origins of Corinthian, of the basket laid on the ground with a tile on the top and the Corinthian and the cactus leaves growing through it, um, that surely embodies pretty much all of that. Um, and then finally, to end, we started in Naples and we're going to end in Naples. And this is rather fun. You've got this rather cute little cheeky figure, a massacre on, I suppose, 
um, protecting all your fear of spirits, but he's about to eat that egg, I think. Or is he sticking his tongue out? I'll let you decide. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short romp through um, capitals of the world. And um, please do send us any examples of yours and uh, we'll put them online. And um, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>